it has been far too long. It's been about three weeks since the last video. I appreciate those of you who have stuck around. I am glad to be broadcasting from the new office. It is much smaller than the old office. But nevertheless, the lighting, I think, is pretty good. I was able to get my laptop running. There was a little bit of worry, as a matter of fact, a lot of worry that I wasn't able to get the camera and the microphone working. But I do have it working, so we're going to run with it as long as we possibly can. And why not open some sealed PlayStation games in this particular episode? And they're baseball, because we're getting ready to get into the World Series. We have two very exciting League Championship Series going on. Both series went seven games as we get ready for the World Series. Now, granted, in this pandemic society that we're in, sports are certainly nowhere near the same as they've been in years past. But nevertheless, having baseball playoffs, especially the League Championship Series, being so interesting as they are, I thought now would be a good time to go ahead and look back 20 years to the 2001 sports year or the main year of 2000 and take a look at a trio of baseball games for the PlayStation from the most popular to the dark horse that not a lot of people talked about. So let's look at EA Sports offering, which of course was Triple Play 2001. This guy right here, I believe that's Mike Piazza on the cover. Triple Play was the most popular baseball series for the PlayStation. EA Sports really had a stranglehold on the PlayStation, honestly, between Madden and NCAA Football and NCAA March Madness and other series Triple Play was no exception, starting way back with Triple Play 97, and as it went through the years, it kind of stagnated until the Triple Play 2000 year, where they kind of redid some of, thing, some of the things in the game and made it more interesting, especially outside of the main game, when they added targets and other things to the Home Run Derby, which made it feel more like its own game. These days, you could probably buy something similar for like $5 uh, as its own standalone game, but it was included in here, and it's also included in Triple Play 2001 as well. well. As we see in the back of the case here, Go Yard is what is promised here, and you can see the EA Sports. It's in the game logo in the upper left, I believe, based on what I see on the camera. We do have some features that are talked about, as always, in the back of these cases. Legendary ball players. You can go deep with baseball's all-time greats, including Babe Ruth, Willie Mays, and many more. We see this integration of older baseball players with modern players, especially in like Diamond Dynasty, which is more its own card game for MLB The Show, but we also saw it with older MLB games as well as the rosters really expanded, and it really got its start with the Triple Play series as EA was very smart in going backwards on the roster and implementing some of the Hall of Fame players or the more well-known players and teams of the past. Big plays, big rewards. This is something that EA was big on during the PlayStation and early PlayStation 2 era is adding more to the game than just the game. Here you can unlock legendary players, unique stadiums, special teams, and more. And you did that all in-game. These days you're paying extra money for DLC for that, but back then it was all through gameplay. And yes, there was a bit of a grind sometimes, but nevertheless you got to unlock some really cool stuff. And this game was certainly no exception to that rule. Deeper gameplay with more signature pitching and batting styles of all-star players. That's great. Big League Baseball, all of the teams, all of the players, and all of the ballparks pitting today's superstars against old school heroes. And we talked about that already. Big League Challenge. This is my favorite thing about Triple Play 2001. More ways to swing for the fences, including the all-new Extreme Target Contest, the ultimate test of power and bat control. So no more just standard home run derby, no sir. Now you are aiming your moonshots at targets all over the field, trying to get as many points as possible. It is very addictive. It is a game that you could probably sell on your own outside of the Triple Play games, but I spent hours and hours playing these games, these uh, extreme target challenges to try and up my score. Very, very addictive. And as we take a look at some of the screenshots in the back here, and I do apologize for some of the glare, really the screenshots don't look too bad, especially for the PlayStation. Some of the models are a bit blocky, but that's to be expected for the 32-bit era. So let's go ahead and open this up, and we'll see what is on the inside. Now, granted, I don't know how well I'm going to do at getting these open, as I don't have my scissors right in front of me. You know how this goes. I do have a little bit going on. There we go. You can actually hear it opening, at least I hope. There we go. 
my trash is now under my desk. And we do have the Triple Play 2001 ID sticker at the top, which we will take off. And then we'll take a look at what is on the inside. I think the EA Sports uh, catalog is in here too, which is always fun to take a look at. So we'll take that off. We'll leave that for now. And as we open up the case, oh, the case is damaged, unfortunately, but that happens with uh, with PlayStation cases. So I'm going to try and hold it together, but that's what's on the inside. We have the game disc, we have the EA It's In The Game catalog, and we have the instruction manual. So we'll just uh, turn the disc around so you can see here, and it's nothing exciting. It's basically the same as the front box art. EA, it's in the game. This is our catalog here, and as we open it up, uh, just basically going over all of the games from the previous year, Madden 2000, uh, NASCAR 2000, because we're still in the year uh, 2000 at this point, NHL and NCAA football 2000, of course. We also have Knockout Kings 2000 and NBA Live 2000. NBA Live still very much the dominant force in basketball at that time. FIFA 2000 and Triple Play 2001. We also have Supercross 2000 as well. And I think that's it. We also have the really doesn't work well uh, PlayStation gamepad that was third party and Sony never approved it for use. So it really didn't work all that well if we're being completely honest. When we take a look at the instruction manual here, and again, it's kind of a shame about the game case, but that does happen. Manual is in black and white. There's not really a lot to see here. Just have our basic controls and gameplay. We do have a uh, an ad for Superbike 2000 as well. Do want to see if they talk about the, uh, the Extreme Target Challenge here, because again, I think that's the most interesting thing of Triple Play 2001, but I'm not sure that it's here. Uh, let's see. Big League Challenge. The biggest bats in the majors prove whose lumber packs the biggest pop. You select the contestants to participate in the tournament. One-on-one -on -one competition or new this year, an extreme challenge in which sluggers receive points for accuracy as well as distance. So that is pretty cool. We also have a Home Run Legends competition as well. Something I think that's interesting about the Triple Play series is that uh, CBC broadcaster uh, Jim Hewson, who really does a great job with hockey, I think, was also the announcer for Triple Play as well. So he got his baseball in as well as his hockey. Uh, very good announcer, by the way. I love his emotion. So that's a look at Triple Play 2001. Again, uh, this is the most popular baseball game that there was, the most popular series that there was, and people really bought this hand over fist. Next, we have kind of the runner-up, a series that was really coming into its own but never could really catch up to Triple Play. And we're talking about Sony's own MLB series. This is MLB 2001 with Chipper Jones on the cover. Made by the pros, played by the pros. This is 989's slogan. And really, it's not surprising uh, to see them come behind EA Sports. This happens so very much during the PlayStation and the PlayStation 2 era, especially the later part of the PlayStation era from like the year 2000 on. We have new commentary. Now, this is pretty neat. This particular baseball game right here has commentary from Hall of Famer Vin Scully, which is a major deal. Vin Scully, of course, a Hall of Fame broadcaster, uh, a voice that is iconic in the business. And really, Vin does a great job in this particular series. He's teamed with Dave Campbell, who did some work for ESPN. And the two of them combined do a fairly decent job in this particular game. Franchise, spring training, home run derby, and more. So there's certainly more depth here. Uh, ultimate gameplay with total control batting and fielding. Total control was a 989 thing that they really started with NFL Game Day, uh, sent through NCAA Game Breaker, and then through the rest of their sports series. Uh, new AI with consultation from Tony Gwynn, Trevor Hoffman, and Davey Johnson. So that's pretty cool. New graphics, incredibly detailed player and stadium models, and more than 250 motion captured animations. And again, we'll try and show you what some of the uh, screens look like. And I think they're on par with Triple Play. And honestly, I think that this game runs just a little bit smoother than Triple Play does, but doesn't have that quite that arcade feel 
And I do think that the offense lags behind a little bit. It is pretty difficult to hit a home run in this game. Maybe a little too difficult for a video game, at least in my personal opinion. So we're going to go ahead and try and open this up, and we'll see what it looks like on the inside. In my opinion, as a uh, as a video game player and as someone who's played sports games for a long time, I actually think that the MLB series, even back then, was really giving EA a, a decent battle. Uh, while EA was more well known, I think that the baseball games were pretty close. Uh, even though Madden and uh, and NCAA were blowing by nine eight nine at this time, I do think that the uh, that the baseball games were closer. We do have the MLB two thousand and one sticker up there. Just gonna change the microphone, move it up a little bit, so you can hear me a little bit better going to go ahead and take the ID sticker off and then we're going to take a look on the inside. I believe that there's going to be a 989 catalog in here as well. All right, we'll put that in the can and when we take this and open it up, okay, that case is holding up. So when we open it up, we do have the game disc we have the 989 studios catalog and then behind the catalog we have an ad for nba shootout 2000 i'd love to do more shootout games but i haven't been able to find very many of those sealed so let's go ahead and just take that fix that we're going to take the manual out so we can look at it and before we do that let's take a look at the 989 sports catalog once again here here it is and inside, again, we have the logo, made by the pros, played by the pros. One of the big things about the 989 Sports Series was that they teamed up with actual pro players to do strategy or consultation, things like that, to try and add uh, some authenticity to the games. And while it didn't always work out, I thought that that was pretty fascinating. Plus, a lot of the time, the pros would actually lend themselves to motion capture sequences in the game as well. So we have MLB 2001. We also have NFL Extreme 2. Uh, NFL Extreme Series wanted to be NFL Blitz and just failed. So I'm not even going to talk about those because just thinking about them just makes me angry. They Such potential and just wasted. NCAA Game Breaker 2000. And we also have NFL Game Day 2000. We also have NHL Faceoff 2000 and NBA Shootout 2000. And we have Supercross Circuit in NCAA Final Four 2000 as well. So 989, just like EA, certainly had their sports bases covered. Unfortunately for 989, they always were falling just a little bit behind EA, if not a lot behind, depending on the sport in question. We take a look at the manual here. The manual is fairly thick. It is about 30 pages, a little bit less than that. Also on the inside of the manual, we have a... Uh, we have a 989 sports um, survey that you can take, kind of like a, a warranty card. Which games do you own? I like this one because listen to all of these titles. Cool Borders, yep. Although Cool Borders after two kind of went downhill, no pun intended. Jet Moto, awesome. But again, when 989 took over for single track, downhill. MLB, yep obviously, because we have that right here. NBA Shootout. Those actually got a little bit better after 989 took over, but not by much. NCAA Game Breaker. Eh. NFL Game Day. Really tried to keep up with Madden, but just couldn't do it. NFL Extreme. Again, we don't talk about NFL Extreme. It's kind of like the Voldemort of arcade football games. Three Extreme. No, don't do it. Uh, NHL Faceoff really wanted to be good. I love the presentation, but unfortunately not as good as EA's NHL games. Rallycross, okay, I guess. Twisted Metal, again, 989 took over, and that's for the worse. And then Siphon Filter, which was a fairly decent um, stealth action series. On the inside of the manual, everything is in black and white. There's not really a lot to show off, although uh, the play controls are maybe a bit too complicated for a baseball game, but that's just me. We take a look at some of the uh, the gameplay features. There's a draft here. You can do some free agent signings, all-star games. Uh, see if they talk a little season games. They don't really talk about franchise mode all that much. There is a little blurb about it here. 
Goal of franchise mode is to build a team through free agency good enough to win the World Series. You start out with a team made up of lower attributed players, and with each win, the team earns points used to obtain franchise players. So it's not really a franchise mode in uh, in exact terms, but it's a good try and an attempt to, to uh, an attempt to bring franchise to baseball. Again, this fell behind triple play a little bit, but if you're comparing them in terms of gameplay, they're actually very close. And in terms of technical ability or performance, I think they're. Uh, I think this actually edges triple play just a little bit. I think the triple play 2001 is a little bit more uh, jittery in terms of frame rate and looks maybe a little bit blockier. So I tend to prefer this in terms of presentation, but in terms of gameplay, I think that uh, triple play and MLB are very, very close. Two baseball games down, and one more to go. Let's go ahead and put this back. And now we take a look at the Dark Horse. We take a look at a series that unfortunately flew under way too many radars in terms of baseball games, and that is a darn shame. Talking about 3DO's own High Heat Baseball, and this is Sammy Sosa High Heat Baseball 2001. This is a great baseball game series that sadly did not make it past the PlayStation 2 era, and that, again, is a big shame. Uh, 3DO did a great job with combining sim and arcade, but not letting one take over the other. They very much hand-in-hand, and you can adjust things through sliders to make it as sim or as arcade as you want, so it's really the accessible kind of baseball game. Now, this being the last of the... um, of the high heat games before the transition to next generation systems looks a little bit blocky and the presentation leaves something to be desired, but the gameplay at the core here, I think is excellent. The newest version of GameSpot's 1999 sports game of the year considered the best ball, best baseball game ever made. And again, that's according to GameSpot. That is what we see on the back of the case. This is a double disc case, but it's really for the instruction manual, which is actually includes a strategy guide on the inside. I could also win a trip to the 2000 MLB All-Star Game, which means I would have to get in my DeLorean and fly back there. Um, The most lifelike pitcher versus batter matchups with realistic base running, managing, and fielding. The best and most up-to-date rosters with real MLB teams and MLBPA players. Includes dead-on predictions for 2000 as well as accurate, detailed teams from 1999 and over 40 new features and improvements. And again, if you take a look at the screens, I, I really don't think they look that impressive. The stat lines are way too big and look way too generic, but nevertheless, presentation is only a part of a game, right? How does it play? That is the most important thing. And in my opinion, High Heat Baseball plays really, really darn good. So there is the seal up there. And again, this is a double disc case, although there aren't two discs in here. Uh, Part of it is a strategy guide. Now, if I can get this open, which may take some time, there we go. We'll take a look and I will show you what is on the inside. Why not make like a super long episode for my first one back after moving, right? Thanks very much, by the way, for your support of the channel over the last couple of years. It is greatly appreciated. Uh, I know I'm close to 600 subscribers in the channel. That certainly means a lot, so thank you very much. All right. Let's go ahead and take the ID label off. There we go. All right. I'm going to put this right over here, I think. So when we open up the top here, The best baseball game, we guarantee it. See details inside. Okay, we'll see. So on the inside, we just have the instruction manual. We don't have a disc. We also have highheat.com, although I don't think that site exists anymore. So we're going to take that manual out. So there's nothing else, by the way. And then below that, we have the official Sammy Sosa High Heat Baseball 2001 Strategy Guide, and we have the actual game disc. So I'll turn that around so you can see it. Hopefully I don't drop anything. There it is. And I also want to show you for funsies. (laughs) Oh, man, I can't believe this. One of the worst video games of all time. See that right there? Sammy Sosa Softball Slam. That game is terrible. 
Maybe at some point I'll film some footage of it from my PS1 over here next to me. Oh, it's it's terrible. Just just do yourself a favor. Even if you're a pure softball fan, just just don't. Just, just don't. Take my word. Just don't. All right. Let's take a look at the manual first. The manual is pretty thick, as you can see here. I believe I can actually take a look for you. Uh, it is over 30 pages, so it uh, exceeds the MLB 2001 uh, by a few pages. Satisfaction guarantee. This is pretty interesting. <clears throat> Dear Bears baseball fan, thank you for purchasing a copy of the 3DO Company Sammy Sosa High Heat Baseball 2001 video game for the PlayStation game console. Sequel to the best baseball game ever as proclaimed by PC Gamer Magazine. Our internal baseball studio is a group of passionate baseball fanatics who only make baseball games and who are devoted to creating a baseball experience that will satisfy the demands of diehard baseball gamers and the most devoted fans of the game. We are so convinced of the quality of our new Sammy Sosa High Heat Baseball 2001 video game that we are willing to guarantee that you will be totally satisfied with your purchase. Our offer is simple. If you are not satisfied with our Sammy Sosa High Heat Baseball 2001 video game for any reason, simply ship it back to us within 10, 10 days of the original purchase. Then, following our CW return product, we'll replace it with another of our video games for the PlayStation game console as selected by you from the list below. We make this offer to you to demonstrate that we stand firmly behind our commitment to provide you with the best baseball game in the market. But don't simply take our word for it. Go ahead and try our Sammy Sosa High Heat Baseball 2001 video game for yourself. You've got nothing to lose. We've done our best to ensure that Sammy Sosa High Heat Baseball 2001, how many times are we going to say the title, provides the most enjoyable baseball experience ever created for gamers. And as CEO of 3DO, I guarantee your complete satisfaction. Sincerely yours, Trip Hawkins, chairman and CEO of the 3DO Game Company. And if you don't like it and you sent it back, you could get Army Men 3D, Toka Championship Racing, Uprising X, or Vegas Games 2000. And I'll tell you right now, Army Men, 2000, uh, Army Men 3D might be the only bet on there. Those other games are terrible. All right. We take a look at the instruction manual. Uh, it's fairly obvious how to play. Uh, they don't really, I mean, the play controls are kind of overwhelming if you look at them that way. But you learn to play pretty quickly, I think. Uh, exhibition games are here. Let's see if there are any other options. Game setup, team and stadium selection, play ball, playing a season, home run derby is here. It's all here. It's pretty decent, I think. Um, again, just like it says, and they're not exaggerating, the pitcher versus batter confrontation uh, probably has done the best in this game of the three. At least that's in my opinion. Here's the strategy guide right here. I don't think there is a lot in here. As a matter of fact, there are no pictures at all. It is just, it is a wall of text from start to finish. There are no images. Uh, there is nothing else here to really show you, except there's a, there's a note page if you want to write down some notes here. And apparently Trip, Ta uh, Trip Hawkins uh, talks a little bit about his history, saying he programmed his first computer sports game in 1973. He began playing in his first fantasy baseball league in 1976, three years before the start of rotisserie that is given credit today for inventing the fantasy leagues that now have 20 million members. Tripp has been in the business for a very long time. He knows what he's talking about. And even though the 3DO didn't do as well as he wanted, it's not his fault per se. Uh, he certainly had the vision, but unfortunately the execution fell just a little bit short. The High Heat series got a little bit more notoriety with the PlayStation 2. We actually have one of those games we'll open in a future episode, but we're not going to do that now because this episode has gone almost 25 minutes, and I'm sure that you're done listening to me go on and on. I'm glad to be back. Thank you very much for checking out this and all of my unsealed videos. I really do appreciate it. And until the next time, my friends, make sure that you take care of yourselves and each other, and we'll do this again real soon. Until that time comes, my friends, see you later.